If you want to stay here, that's okay, but I really want to move to Pasanon. I want to be there because we don't really know when a landslide is going to happen here. Incredibly, despite the lobbying by the children in this very conservative part of the country, some adults are resistant to changes that will make their lives safer. Fortunately, the kids have a powerful ally, former governor of Southern Leyte, Rosette Larius. She heads the provincial disaster team, which for months has been consulting people on disaster countermeasures that they would find acceptable. The authorities finally decided that the new school building should be built, that it was decided to locate the school at nearby Passanon, considered to be a far less hazardous position. This was a very controversial area. Many of the parents didn't want to move them into this area because they really wanted, you know, the Filipino, it's the nature of the Filipino that we want to stay where we are. We, we were not want to, want to move out to another area. So they felt that the personality of Santa Paz would be totally eradicated if they moved to Pasan. On the day of the school opening, those who are unwilling to send their children to Pasanon protest as regional officials arrive. We want our national barangay high school to be back in Santa Paz. No transfer shall be made outside the territorial boundaries of the LJO concern. Despite the protests, the project is completed and the day arrives for the grand opening. For the parents, I know you will be at peace when your children come to school here in Pasano. Because I know what happens to Santa Paz when it rains. I was there in 2003 when I saw the ground breaking up. Because that area in Santa Paz where the school is located is in a very dangerous area. An activity like this, like moving things out into transferring, involved a lot of uh, emotional displacement also. So when the children themselves were the ones who helped out in the initial relocation of the temporary site, and the parents were actually just followed suit. You know, it happens that the children became the leaders in this instance. With a rapidly growing population, the Philippines is becoming a densely populated country. Inevitably, this forces people to live close to the hazardous mountainsides and sometimes on them. Resourceful community leaders are needed to cope with the dangers that lurk in this landscape. Maria Pereza Soledad from La Hulidad Barangay is one of them. We established our tree park way back in 1994 and during that time we let the children participate. We told them that we do this because we wanted to recover the trees that we have lost. They are aware that when they plant trees along the riverbanks, they are helping protect our barangay from flash flooding later on. We are protecting our community from storm surges, they know that, from the waves, the big waves which comes, especially during typhoons. This community has set up a project to try and ensure a steady supply of fish, as well as jobs for young people. The fish cage is owned by our youth organization. They call themselves Anak Nahulid. Anak, uh, Anak is actually in the dialect for child. They take care of everything, constructing the fish cage, uh, taking care of the fish, and even uh, harvesting and selling them everything. Here in Naholi, the child's participation in every activity that we have is really, really given so much importance because we did not inherit this world from our ancestors. We borrowed it from our children. Go! One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In St. Bernard, near Gwinsargon, site of the worst landslide, the Sunrise Theatre Group regularly reenacts the tragedy. Some of those acting are survivors, and Rowan is one. Being a student survivor, I have my responsibility 
to get involved to this since I have my experience and though we lost our loved ones, the memories, we will, we will have only to treasure that. I have that responsibility myself to be a voice to all of us people, especially for the rights and responsibilities of the children for our protection. This is a combination of education and entertainment at the same time. Education in the sense that they may be able to pick lessons from it. Emotionally, most especially the adults, the parents, the teenagers here, all of us people who are living in St. Bernard will become learned. And that what is that what are we are hoping for. They can express. Oh, we have experienced that one. It's true. So there is a sort of affirmation. This is also an opportunity for the children to be listened and then of course to be to get be to be involved. In the evening, over 2,000 people come to watch. Honey greets the audience and encourages them to learn from the production. We, the children, have this right to participate and get involved. And that's why I want that we, the children, the voice of the children, will be heard. Through that, we can say that we have this power to, to create something and help like saving lives of people. Alvin and his friends, many survivors of this tragedy, start by acting out their life before the disaster struck. He believes they can stop future tragedies. We have a big voice in our community, being a children. So me, being a student and as a child, I will play a big role in preventing the disaster. I hope that all the people there in our village will learn that it is really important to think first of our safety so that the children and all other people will be safe and their lives will not be lost if there could be a disaster.